is where did you find that? It's a talk that is replacing Simon Yeager's talk. He does apologize that he can't turn up and, and enlighten you with about stuff that I don't know anything about. So I'm going to talk about security. And this is me. I'm a managing consultant in Capgemini in Stavanger in Norway. Uh, MVP for the last seven or eight years. Uh, Azure is blah, 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 lots of things. Normally in this slide, I have likes whiskey a lot if you're buying. And it's hidden for good reasons today. Now, uh, you can tweet me at Ed Merrigan. Um, I have an email address sometimes. Uh, visit my company because they let me out. And if you're a bit masochistic, just like visit my website for weird stuff. Right. Security is hard. Open questions to the audience. Right? There would be a quiz. You didn't know it. Tough. <laughs> I like you. You laugh. Um, why is security hard? Jesus Christ, don't raise, all your, raise your hands at once. <laughs> I'm guessing that you guys don't know why security is hard, and that's why you're in this talk. And you're there going, Christ, Niall, it's my talk. Come on. OK, security is hard because all I have to do is find one single mistake. You have to figure out all the different attack vectors that I can use, and I only have to find the single one that you forgot. And it's really easy to do. Now, this is probably my favorite photo to explain security of all things, because it just illustrates, you know, that guy, that poor elk, probably made one single mistake, and that wolf got a nice piece of lunch. Now, I like taking the mic of I out of IoT, mainly because IoT is hard to spell, but also because it is the brand new tech in internet terms. It's only like six, eight months old, maybe a bit more, but it has like two other things, big data and uh, machine learning, which perform an amazing triad of buzzword bingo. So if you mention all of these three things, people usually go, bingo. Now, the thing what I want to show you is that IoT is evolving. And I try to explain IoT to people and people like my mom. Now, my mom is in her 60s. And she's sitting down in, a house, in our house in Ireland. She has a glass of wine in front of her. I'm sitting officer, her, another glass. And she just casually, in between telling me who died, goes, as, I don't know, Irish mammies do this. The first thing they do is when you pick up the phone, you'll never guess who died. <laughs> Hello to you two. Uh, so I'm there and she goes, Niall, what's IoT? Why? She goes, Your dad wants to buy a smart TV. Oh, okay, fine. So he wants to watch Netflix on, inside the living room. That's fine. Well, and, I, and she goes, I said, it's, it's fine. Don't worry about it. It's just a TV that's connected to the internet. She goes, but seriously, I've heard so much about IoT. What is IoT? I said, are you really sure you want to know? <laughs> you know, I can't stop once I start. She goes, okay, hit it with me. I said, IoT is connecting different devices to the internet that are normally not connected, such as a fridge. And she goes, why on earth? Would you want to connect a fridge to the internet? And I said, reasons. No, I said, seriously, imagine you're there. You're standing up, you look inside the fridge, you can't find the butter, but the fridge tells you where it is. It's brilliant. Imagine also it says, it knows what's in the fridge, so it can tell you what you can make. Or you realize you don't have butter, and you want to send a message to your father, and who will not read it and not bring home the butter because your fridge sent it, and it doesn't, he doesn't understand why a fridge is sending him an SMS. She goes, well, I suppose it's kind of OK. Yeah, that would make sense. I said, but ma'am, these devices share data. She goes, OK. And I said, imagine you had an internet connected toilet. And she goes, oh god. I don't like where this is going. Don't. I said, imagine when you flush, it figures out what you need to eat. And then your fridge goes and orders it. All right? And she goes, Oh, sweet Jesus, that's horrible. I said, that's why the internet's made of tubes. Anyway, um, so I, she was like, okay, this makes no sense, I think, but this sounds really clever and people are doing this. And I said, yes, they're connecting IoT to everything. And then I said, I think that this is what we'll see in the future. You know, you need to reboot your fridge to use the latest API. Okay, because we are programmers and this would make sense. Now, I thought, what is the most insane thing I've ever seen that has attracted funding for being an IoT device. And I, you know, after seeing Troy's talk, I had to take out a ton of things because I wasn't going to reuse them. And you know, it's a bit early in the day for that. So I came up with this. This is a mattress. It is a smart mattress cover. 
It was funded to the tune of $1.2 million. You have to recharge your mattress before you can sleep, okay? Now, the thing is, what is the business proposal for a Smattress? It's this. Smattress sends an alert to your mobile phone whenever somebody is using it in your bed in a questionable way. <laughs> Think about this. Little Timmy's bouncing on the bed. Timmy, get off the bed. Wife's bouncing on the bed. Not too sure about that. You know, I, it, 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 if, that is, if this is how you're going to fix things, you may not need a smattress. You might need a lawyer. It really is a case of shut up and take my money. Now, if you have ever wondered how to find a smattress on the internet by not going to Kickstarter, you can use a search engine known as, the, as Shodan. Shodan is a search engine for the Internet of Things. How long do you think it takes to scan the internet for an open port? All four billion IP addresses. How long do you think it would take? Seconds. That's a really nice vague answer. Uh, try again. Anyone else? Minutes. Two and a half minutes on 10 gigabit switches to scan the entire internet, all right, to figure out if something's up or down. Now, that, if you've ever, any of you work with like AWS, Amazon, all the, when you spin up VMs, think about it, you have two and a half minutes before someone will scan it to figure out what it's vulnerable for, all right? Now, if you ever thought about trying to scan the internet, what would you go looking for? So I'm Irish. So the first thing I went looking for was beer. And I found this. This is a uh, brewery in Boston. Now, if you look at the top, it says 5,900. That's the port number it scanned and took a picture of. What runs on port 5,900? It says it underneath. Does anyone know what port 5,900 is? All people in the audience might. It's called VNC, Virtual Network Computing. It's remote desktop before remote desktop was baked into Windows. Now, the thing is, a lot of people still install VNC as a support tool, but they forget the usernames and passwords, so they don't, they don't enable that because passwords are hard. So this is enabled and out in the internet, right? So after finding beer, I got a bit hungry. I thought I'd go look for a kebab, right? So I found a kebab shop in Spain. Now, the thing was I paid $7.35 for something I don't know what I was going to eat, but then I thought I need to get home, so I thought I'd get a bike. Problem was the bike wasn't too good after a few drinks and a kebab, so I'd get a bus. The bus broke down, so then I had to go get a taxi. I eventually found my way to a, my yacht. Now... This is where, in the talk, I figure out what side of good and evil you're on, okay? Three o'clock in the morning, you've drank a little bit, you've had your kebab, you're home, and you find a businessman's yacht on the internet you can control, specifically the alarm button. <laughs> Do you... A... Quietly close the laptop, go to bed, think nice thoughts. Or B, figure out if there's something close to you by pressing the alarm button. A, one person. You are the two people. I'm not okay. good enough to hide my You're not good enough to hide your... I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Um, B, all the rest of you. Thank you for restoring my faith in humanity. You're all lunatics. If you're going to do this, hide yourself behind a VPN, otherwise they'll track you. Anyway, so... You have now woken up a businessman at 3 o'clock in the morning, and he's a bit annoyed, or a businesswoman or whoever. So they decide they're going to get a massage. And this is a hydro massage system. Now, can, do you notice what I noticed the first time round? There's a control for pressure. This is also unauthenticated. <laughs> is right. Now, imagine you're inside and you're getting your nice massage and some 15-year-old lunatic, all of you, <laughs> finds this. We all know that you're not going to go, I'll close this, it'll be fine. You're all going to be going, shush, 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 shush. and there's go that guy is going to have a colonoscopy, or he's going to be very clean on the inside. <laughs> so, how do we fix this? We talked to this lady, the internet witch. Anyway... <sighs> I love it. It's, you can see the people like, Wee, oh, look, there's something on the screen. Now, I thought, okay, none of this is life-threatening and dangerous, but I thought I'd go show you what else I found. I found this 
It is a composter. You can do kind of uh, random things with it. But this really isn't lethal. How about this? This is a pool control system. Do you notice the two giant barrels of chlorine and acid <laughs> that you can control from the internet without any authentication? Do you think this is a good thing? Maybe not. So I found this as well. And if you're wondering what this is, this is brand new, found today. Does anyone want to take a guess at what this is? It's a fire suppression system. I kid you not, that you can log into and literally start spraying people with. Wouldn't that be fun? Don't do it. Okay, all you B people, there's two people, Mark Seaman and you are very pleasant, you won't do anything. But now, this is another German control system. I have no idea, it looks very efficient, very German. Um, but I found this in the Netherlands. It allows you to drop 1.7 tons of animal feed down a tube if you want to. You can do this, which has lots of buttons. This is where I kind of tell you that all engineers are nuts. They start putting lots of recreation of buttons on screen. Now, we have this. This is from Estonia. It's silos. Now, when I first saw this, I wasn't too sure if it was a really good Russian ploy of hiding the ICBMs. Okay, I honestly think it's actually grain silos, but I had to check two or three times to be sure because you never know they could be hiding it. This one is something pumpage. I don't know. I found a burny thing and swirly thing. Again, online you can play with. You can have this burny thing. It's written in Polish, I think. Um, I found this one in Sweden. All right. Again, un uh, unauthenticated. You can join in, play with it, do whatever you want. Nice and big and burny. And then I found this, which is my f one of my favorite images because this is a control, a, fact, a control panel for a factory. So there you are, you're sitting on your front lawn, they fire up the smokestack, and there's smoke coming across your lawn, and you go, screw it, I'm gonna turn off the factory next door. Because who else would need to do that? So I found this, and I kind of was like putting this in because it had a thing like an acid pump and a caustic pump, and I didn't know what to do with it. This is probably one of the most beautiful uh, design screens I've seen. I don't know what it is, but it looks lovely. And this is a little bit terrifying. This is a sawmill control panel in Finland, running on Windows XP. <laughs> now, you can go in and remote control a, a Finnish sawmill if you so wish. I don't recommend you do it. The Finns get very annoyed when you do these type of things. All right? This one is designed by engineers. So, first thing I, that I noticed, the MSN Messenger logo right here, okay? There's a hazard symbol, there's a bomber cala, I don't know what that is, and it connects. This is a, as I thought, nuclear control panel. It's actually a control panel for a home heating system, I think. But again, these are all online, no authentication. You can remote connect to any of them without being stopped. All you need to do is go look on Shodan for port 5,900 and you will find most of these. Okay, very simple. The question is, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Because people think that passwords are hard. People think that security is hard. People also put in requirements that it will be allowed to accessible without a password. Don't do that. Now, when I say G see, see James Vanderbeek crying a little bit, it makes me a little bit happy because he was part of this train wreck. And I like to put in a small breather point for me so I can get a glass of water. And this is where I, I, I honestly think that CSI Cyber is its perfect highlight. Q-Feed. We need audio, please. The first five devices are clean. Now, if mom's comes back the same way, we struck out here too. Oh, there's malware. So, there's malware. How do they find malware? It turned red. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to hide your code, write in green. <laughs> but, next point. If we take what the code that it popped up at the end, I honestly, I, I, I didn't know what it was. This is where my wife usually gives out to me. Because, have you seen, any of you seen the, um, the latest uh, Bourne movie? No, there's a, there's a line that we're going to hack the database with SQL, okay? And, I, and this is like first three minutes in the movie. I'm sitting down, nice wife there, she's happy out, and I, and I go, oh, for fuck. And she goes, if you start, I'm turning it off. But, 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 oh. 
I just suffer in silence. I'm, I'm fairly sure that's how doctors and nurses think through Grey's Anatomy and, and House and things. But anyway, so every so often, after finding all these different control systems, you find people doing real work. And um, you can find all mad sorts of things. So I found this per person doing Facebook. Um, so what we, poor Timothy is having a really bad day in a, in a minute, but he's, uh, I'm fairly sure where he is right now, uh, you can, this is remote controlled by accident, because it struck me that this is happening. So what can you kind of guess from this screen? Someone's browsing Facebook, we got that. But what else can you see? It is looks to me like a, there's TeamViewer installed, it also looks like to me to be an internet cafe or one of those things you see on a, you know the, um, when you go into an airport and they've got all the rows of, uh, you pay like a, a dollar and you can use the internet and they have the really crap uh, metal keyboards. It's like one of those. So that, this is one of those reasons why you shouldn't use those devices because you can't trust that there's no one watching or intercepting your communications. So please don't use those. Now, I found another person um, playing Facebook as well, and they were open chat windows. This was actually a person in the UK. Uh, this person was having really fun times. I have no idea what they were doing, but I found them too. Um, then I started kind of getting a little bit talking about backgrounds. And every so often, I run into something. I'm not too sure if it's someone playing a joke on me or I've actually found something really cool. I'll leave it to your imagination of what I've just found here. Does anyone know who Marvel are? They're a semiconductor company. Now, what kind of struck me is that you've kind of got all these like secure connections here, and this is on open remote VNC that I can connect to and then run my way in. I'm on your network and pivot. Okay? So I found this and I was like, okay, this is a bit mental. And then this guy made me laugh because this is someone else's desktop and I thought this was really cool. But what I noticed on top was they were running as root. Okay? So that kind of made me go, cool. Every so often you find people doing email. And as we know, changing email is kind of fun. And I found this poor chap who's sending out uh, logistics. And then there's this Thai banking. This is actually someone logged in using banking software. And we can probably do something there. But if you found someone's remote connection enabled, what would you do? How would you warn them? Think about it. How would you warn them? To put up a text box? Yeah. Very good. You could do this. Random person two here. Yeah, lol. Anyone can connect. <laughs> <laughs> it's, this, is, this is a very Irish virus. <laughs> you know, it's, it's happy. It lets you go. It's fine. But if you were malicious, what would you do? Install virus? Would you think about ransomware? Pull down some ransomware run it, and now you've encrypted the disk, and if they want to get their stuff back, they've got to pay you. You don't even have to buy ransomware software. You can buy a full-on control and command structure complete with ready package software for you to use, and all you need to pay is 10% of the take. There are a couple of new variants coming on. One is you can get a key if you pay the bitcoins. Two, you can get the key if you infect two of your friends. Or three, the social engineering one, which is absolutely criminal, other than these, but it's, mo it's probably the most lethal of them all, is what they have done is they've got a new version. What it will do is it'll encrypt your disk. It will leave one space of your disk open, and they will inject kiddie porn in it. And then they will send you a message saying, we're going to notify the authorities if you don't pay. Because that stuff does not go away. So that is the social engineering aspect of it. They're, everyone's going, oh, yeah, OK, ransomware, it's a bit of crap. But the thing is, they are out to make money. And believe it or not, ransomware is based on an element of trust. In other words, you pay, we give you something. And if you don't do that, that's usually where their business model breaks down. So they, are, they do even have support channels for this. So after you've kind of done your screwed up your house, you kind of think you better stay at a hotel. So these are different hotel um, business centers where you can log in. So if you ever want to know which hotel is the cheapest to stay at for like business and services, you can probably use one of these. They're all by the same vendor, the different costs, whatever. And I did say I would show you toilets on the internet. So here is one from Singapore. So this is a toilet uh, screen, as in, you know those little kind of screens you, uh, as you go out of, the, uh, out of the bog and you press the button, you say, I'm happy, I had a good time, I had, didn't have a good time. Um, but I, I like to put at the bottom, the screen is sanitized regularly, however their network is not. Um, 
but that's only a toilet kind of like information panel. What about actually controlling a physical toilet? This one. Now, these are the ones that you know when you go in, you put in your kind of money and you go in and it opens and you do your business, you come back out, it stops and it entirely rinses the whole device, right? This is one of those where you can control the doors, you can open the doors, change the basins, whatever you want to do. And then because it's not bad enough that you have this version, you've got the seat in Jumbo too, and this also has a big start VNC button. Because really, it's not bad enough as it is. Which leads me to think that when IoT evolves to the point, you will start seeing this like error messages in your phone. Now, toilet humor, come on. Anyway, how many of you have got kids? Excellent. For those of you who have kids, this is the very dark part of my talk. This is, this is where I stop being funny. I start trying a uh, uh, funny-ish. And this is where I try to be serious, OK? So for those who have children, there's amazing devices called baby cams, OK? Originally, there were little two-way radios where little Johnny could go inside in his, in, in his crib and play and sleep. And we would understand that you know, every burp and fart, we could, we, they weren't dying. Because as new parents, <coughs> Babies have this amazing tendency to go and stop. And then you as a new parent don't, I don't know if I broke it. And it will stop and then Now, someone came up with the idea, wouldn't it be brilliant if we put a little webcam in this device so we could see if little Johnny's messing with us, trying to do interpretive dance or trying to escape, okay? So this was a really clever idea and people bought these by the millions. Unfortunately, some of these devices support UPnP, universal plug and play, meaning it will contact the router, it will then configure it and allow it to go out online so that you can monitor little Johnny from your phone from any place in the world. Sounds fair, except a lot of these do not have passwords and it is very easy to find them. So here I have Theo's room. Theo doesn't understand that he's on the internet. Theo doesn't understand, or Theo's parents don't understand they've made a crucial mistake in their security, in Theo's security. Theo doesn't understand why people are shouting at him in the middle of the night making sexual noises. Theo doesn't understand that his image is being shared around the web. Worse still, we will just find cots. This is, as you can see, 11th of the 1st, 2017. This is in recent time. This is another crib based actually in Ireland, which I've reported the ISP to. This person here, you can see another crib as well. And it gets better because you have Philo and you don't know what happened. And every so often, you will find the child asleep in there. Worse still, there are more than one of these all around the world. You can see here, all these children are now vulnerable because some developer, some system admin, some person said the requirement for a password is too goddamn difficult for our users. So, every, as we continue finding more of these things online, I found this today. This is a, probably a camera installed to keep an eye on an older person as they're recovering, whatever. I found this poor gentleman in, a, in uh, I have no idea where this is, but you can see here, it continues. I find this type of crap all the time, and every time I do, I report it back to the ISP to say, listen, the person at this IP address on this date, let them know they've made a mistake. Now, this leads to kind of things like this. Strangers hack family's baby monitor and talks to a child at night video. And I'm going to run a video here, which will explain a little bit of what's happened. This is no doubt going to send shivers down the spine of any parent if you use a baby monitor camera in your home. There's an Indiana couple that says theirs was hacked and someone was watching their two-year-old daughter. Charlie DeMare from affiliate WXIN has their frightening story. The smallest one was Madeline. Safe and secure in their Southport home, the Denmans put their two-year-old Gracie to sleep, always keeping an eye on her with this video monitor. Our privacy was just invaded. <laughs> Wednesday, Gracie was at home playing with mom when all of the sudden... Someone was playing music and stuff like that, Every Breath You Take by police. Music started playing from the baby monitor. At first, mom thought it was all a joke, but quickly realized someone hacked the camera. He started doing like sexual noises and stuff like that on the camera. Jared Denman did a little research and found out the person who most likely violated his home camera has done it before. 
posting videos of similar hacks on YouTube, playing that same song and bragging about the breach on Twitter. It agitated me a lot because, I mean, who's to know those people don't even know about it that are on the videos. We kind of felt violated, like we didn't feel secure at all. Over at PC Help Services, David Spoonar says don't make it easy for hackers. It tends to be quite easy, especially when there's a hole found in a particular device and somebody publishes uh, some method online. The Denmans forgot to change the preset factory username and password that came on the camera, allowing relatively easy access. You can make sure that you have a strong wireless network password in case somebody happens to be nearby and wants to connect into your network and bypass your firewall completely. The biggest thing is just changing the username and password. Now, police say there have been an increase in the number of baby monitors that have been hacked recently, so those are some good tips to follow. Right. How many of you spotted what the default password was? Blank. Blank. So, ladies and gentlemen, stern warning to all developers, all product owners, all people in the audience. If a requirement comes across your desk where they say the security is opt-in, tell them it's opt-out. Do not allow your users and your users of your products to be prosecuted, invaded, whatever, violated in this case, by your single, simple, single mistake of not giving a crap whether they have a username and password. It is not that goddamn hard. Change your practices. Do not end up in my slide deck. Now, we're seeing a little bit more of this as well here with this type of thing in basically in like Airbnbs. Because Airbnb are in a different area. Under law, a hotel cannot in, uh, put a surveillance device in your room. You get privacy in your room. However, Airbnb is not in that case. So what they are, people are allowed to do is actually put any camera or whatever they want up. And there's been a lot, an increase of cases of where people are standing up cameras on Wi-Fi networks, like using Raspberry Pis, Raspberry Pi Zeros, leaving hidden cameras, and then start trading all these videos online. So there's a thing called Plug Unplug. It's a device you can buy. You literally plug it in. It sniffs the entire network and nukes everything uh, that looks like a camera off the network that you're on. Okay? It's a very simple device. You can build one if you want off GitHub to go nuts. But because we start seeing more and more of these type of things. Like I found this poor gentleman in Greece. Like it's not exactly brilliant for this man to be on the internet. But it is nothing compared to what I found today. What is this? Anyone trying to figure it out? It's a doctor's office. Doctor's table. This is a doctor's office on the internet open. Think about it. How many times do you go to the doctor and you're there and I can listen? This has remote and remote access and video and audio. How hard do you think it would be that it would have a default username and password that would be complex? Don't do it. So Google is coming up with a scenario where it's trying to get uh, devices like this, where it will have little kind of um, stuff figures, and they will build in remote control baby monitors. This terrifies me. So let's move away from very bad baby monitors to trying to hack fuel tanks. Now, fuel tanks, this is where I have to change gears, because I find that exceptionally dark, that part of the talk. It generally feels the mood going Whew. So let's do something a bit more fun. Now, fuel tanks are awesome because they store fuel, highly volatile, highly flammable. But one, if you ever work in oil and gas, one of the most difficult problems is getting the fuel to the location at the right time in the right volume. Okay? So someone thought, wouldn't it be great if we had a gauge that was internet accessible that would report back and we could check to see when the tank was low or would report and we, or would actually send us a message saying, I need fuel. So these are actually running on port 10,001. And you can go search them via Shodan. Now, you can find approximately about three or 4,000 of them worldwide. This one, for example, here, if you notice on the bottom, says Jet A1. Anyone want to take a guess of what Jet A1 is? Jet fuel, well done. So Jet A1 is very bad to be playing with. You can log in and do stuff with it. The thing is, this was found in Norway, but it's actually a honeypot because I doubt they're running a BitTorrent tracker. 
on my local thing. However, this one is not. This was found in Total Aviation DRF uh, Luftfredzig Station Hill Open. Now, as you can see here, it's got 12,500 liters. It's 43% full. This was remote, remotely accessible. And I found this one in Ireland. This one, all it shows me the different manifolds for unleaded and diesel. It's based out of top in Kilbarrick in Dublin. I can go in and adjust things if I want. And this is a control panel for more fuel, as in the other one that goes pling, 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 when you're trying to actually fill up your tank. So then I found this one. Now, if you're going to run a honeypot, which is called Conpot, for example, please don't run it in Amazon. I doubt my local stat oil station will need to be running in the cloud. Okay? So if, you're gonna, you, if you really want to see how much people will, will actually mess with your systems, stand up a honeypot like this on a local ISP, and you'll see all these different things trying to connect and mess with your fuel manifolds. Now, this is a Coriolis gas and well control system. Again, found online, no uh, security whatsoever, and it controls things like gas, static pressure, gas temperature, gas today, gas yesterday, etc. Any developers in the house? Excellent, good. Any of you use MongoDB? Oh, you're about to get screwed. Right, this is MongoDB. MongoDB is a fantastic database system. It's really clever, allows you to do web scale, it allows you documents, you don't have to have a schema, it's a NoSQL based database, really cool. However, unfortunately, a lot of people who stand up uh, MongoDB do not understand security. Because tell me, how do you enable authentication on MongoDB? You start the Mongo daemon with dash dash auth. In other words, MongoDB is not secure by default. The problem is it also had previous to about 3.2 bound to all open ports outbound, or sorry, bound to all open IPs outbound, meaning it would accept requests from anywhere. It means that you get things like this. This is a database service in um, England which running had 32 gigs of data on it and a couple of different things like Clarendon Enterprise Center, uh, Census, Avanta. And unfortunately, in the last couple of days, we've started to see things that uh, I'll talk about in a minute. But I can show here we've got this particular I want it, dev.wantsapp.com was pointing back to this I want it database. So why bother hacking the front of it when I can hack the back of it because it's open and taking, I can take all your data. Now, I found everything ranging from 4.3 gigabytes to 387, all the way up to 1.1 terabytes of data stored without any single form of authentication which led to a thing back in about the 20th of December last year. A group figured this out and wrote a piece of code. And it started going along and going onto your database, listing all the collections, dropping all the collections, inserting their new one with one single document in it which had a ransom note saying, please pay 2.2 Bitcoin to this address and send us an email with your server IP and we'll restore your databases. Okay? And this was known as Haracker. Now, what happened after that was a couple of other people went, hang on a second, this is kind of cool. And there was copycats. And we ended up with about 20 different actors in play, all doing this, the following. They would, list, li, l, l, sorry, they would look at your database. They would check to see if their ransom note was there. If your, their ransom note wasn't there, they would drop all the collections, pop in their own ransom note, and then leave. Except they didn't have your data, and you would end up with a trail of, different, of six different ransom notes from different attackers, and you didn't know who had your data. They made 22,000 US dollars from single transactions, not a single piece of data returned. Want to know the funky thing with it? Other than the fact that we had, like, for example, 22,000 databases by this particular actor, um, all leading up to 34,503 different databases at the time of writing. The attack code was written in C-sharp. Now, for some of us in the room, that's like, so? For other people in the room, that's, holy crap. Because I have yet to find attack code written for this type of thing, written in C-sharp, which either means a couple of things. One, .NET Core actually works, and you can run on Linux. Or, <laughs> sorry, I, I didn't know why I said that. Shouldn't have said that. Um, <laughs> or, it's like the thing is evolving. People are looking at this, and it was a very easy hack. I think that's the second one. The problem is, it's not just Mongo that's getting pwned right now. We have Hadoop, Elastic, Memcache, Ryak, and Couch. All are under attack right now because everyone's on a gold rush. All of these different services are accessible externally. Hadoop, imagine the amount of data we wiped out from that. 
CouchDB has less users, Ryak has less users. Memcached, even though it's a, non, it's a transient data store, people can investigate the slabs and actually try and query data out of it to see if there's kind of, uh, kind of juicy passwords or whatever. Elastic was getting pwned at the rate of 1,000 uh, instances a day, st stealing data God knows what. So I'll move from that over to house um, control systems. Now, this one here is a control system for a house where you can control things like the camera, the zones, and different areas around, and you can turn things on and off. But there's one here, for example, here, where you can select a room to control. So you can get all the different ones in room linking, and you can also decide if you want to turn up the temperature, change the uh, entrance code, or you can even do things like check the time. You can do other different bits and pieces. Here is a... What is it? Music control panel for a house. So imagine you're there at 3 o'clock in the morning again. All right? What music would you play? The music to The Shining? Right of the Valkyries? You know? The clowns come in the hard car, car? I have no idea. But we have things like this. I found this particular one here in a um, uh, motel. And this is a geothermal control panel, you know the ones where you spread out all the pipes underneath the ground and it starts taking uh, heat from the ground and f heats your house. This is one of those. Here is a house control system where I can do things like Luftbehandlung, which is uh, air control, uh, and Etabilisning is also for externals. This is a carport where I can check in and out cars. Now, it would be kind of different if we want to go on to do medical systems as well, wouldn't it? Do you think people put medical systems online? Yes. This is high foo, high intense frequency, high frequency ultrasound. Now, funny thing is, when I googled high foo for the first time, right, high foo says it is used in the elimination of prostate cancer. There is no way my prostate is up there unless my head is up my ass, okay? But this thing, this poor woman here, will, uh, you could literally nuke under her eyeballs and melt things using high-frequency ultrasound. Now, I thought, that's pretty bad. What about this? This is a pharmacy control panel. It's a back-office pharmacy control panel where I can, in France, where I can see what's going on, I can uh, see uh, the different uh, pharmacy uh, bits, and I can also see who's going to be in, who's, who, I can Google things. But then I can write my own prescriptions. This is a back-end software system for writing prescriptions in a doctor's office or in a pharmacy. So I can get, like for example, Baypass 20 milligram CPR 30 and how many I want. Now, if Walter White had this, Breaking Bad would have been a lit simpler, you know? So this is just an example of where I can go in and do things and I can actually change, or I could, do, I could figure out what type of drugs I'm actually on, because this is a drug identification control panel. Now, it's really odd that all these devices are accessible online, but they are. So here is another one. It's refill you can change the refillables, you can change the uh, Oryx memo, and all, you can also find out what the p different patient data, who's got what. So I said, okay, let me show you some of the random stuff that's evolved around here. This is a control panel for a login, and then I found this particular one, which is, has 5,000 watts of power. I don't know what it is, but it's kind of weird. It's got 5,000 watts of power. This is one of my favorite things of all time. What's this? Sorry? It's a RAS token, yeah. It's 2FA done right. Because he's got a webcam pointed at his RSA token, so he can go find when he's got something. He's got to log in. He's just said, there's my control. Oh, great. There's my number. He won't lose it. It's right. Because <laughs> how many of you think that this actually is clever? I think this is brilliant. <laughs> well done, you. Now, this is a Sanazar Bidge control panel. No idea why it's here. And I will end my tour of VNC with something crazy. What is this? It's not a nuclear power reactor. And to be honest, that's what absolutely everyone says. I would like to highlight one thing. It's in a crematorium. It's a crematorium control panel. At this point, usually everyone goes, crematorium infant button. Yes. This is a medium-sized body, 100 and 200 pounds, cardboard box, male, fourth case of the day. Online, remotely accessible. You can connect to it.
Think about this, ladies and gentlemen. Who in their right mind would have a bloody crematorium online? Now, does it make sense that usernames and passwords should be involved in your design process very early on? Have I shown you the type of crap we can find? Now, I have shown you about 100 different slides of things I have found. I have over 4,000 images of devices I have found, and these are just some of the ones that just make the most sense to show you because they are absolutely lethal. This was found in 2012. It's offline, thankfully, because when the person found it, they literally went, I think they pe peed themselves and ran away, because you can see here the date in 2012. But this type of device should never have been online. You can imagine the, the type of horror and the type of uh, misery it would cause people. So let me show you another diff really cool advanced hacking tool that you can use today, and this is Google. Okay? Google is one of the few things you never lie to. It knows all your search history. But it also is a fantastic resource because it indexes everything. So when I'm going to normal people, when they're looking for things, they do things like this, recipes for chicken, recipes for kids, which is a really cool thing because recipes for chicken is trying to cook chicken, right? Recipe for kids, not the same thing. And so <laughs> you have, I love how these are, this is what you do. So then you get like this. This is what I Google when I'm bored. Okay. Now, I, I, really, I had to put the D in because otherwise it, just, it gives me a whole lot of Donald Trump stuff. And it's pretty mental. But if you want to know a really cool interview question, why does Donald Duck wear a towel when he comes out of the shower? Come on. Why does Donald Duck wear a towel when he comes out of the shower? He's wet. Exactly. To so stop his feet getting wet because it all dribbles down. But it was really because when the animators uh, figured this out and went, we better not do this, because you can imagine every child likes going, but Donald Duck doesn't have pants and I can go outside. You know, so that's why that is. It's also kind of one of those things, why does Goofy versus Pluto have different things? Anyway, it's another thing that uh, the only um, Disney character have had sex is Pluto. Or Goofy, sorry. He's the only one with a kid. Goofy's had a, Goofy has a little kid. Goofy has a son. I'm just, we haven't seen Goofy's mom yet. Do we just not too sure if it's Pluto? Anyway, <laughs> sorry. Anyway, this is another thing. Sorry, it's a, to completely warp your kind of sensibilities right there. Anyway, if you really want to screw with people, you can do things like this. This is an in URL um, prefix, which means I'm looking for URLs that match certain things. So I can go looking for things like in URL index PHP ID equals. This is a precursor for looking for SQL injection attacks. You can also go looking for things like uh, AirWatch login, which is a for a uh, remote webcam if you want to do something. You can find different things, and these are all known as Google dorks and Google hacks. So you can go, so let's let's think of something here. Does anyone work with ASP.NET, the like 4.6 edition um, MVC or whatever? Do you know what the web config is? Can the web config be downloaded over HTTP? No. Good. Everyone kind of guessed that. Can the web config be downloaded over FTP? Yes, it can. Now, what does the web config contain? Passwords, config data, etc. So if you want to go looking for web configs, you do in URL FTP, in URL web dot, dot, dot config, right? And you can go and find different web configurations that have been uploaded to open FTP sites, which you can then go and download and examine. And inside in these things, you'll find things like this. All right? This is a site Finity from Telerik, which has the actual ID and password and the location of the database. You have, for example, here mail settings to human insurance, but they left the test in the comments, because that's always handy. All right? So I found other things like, for example, here, Twitter access tokens to take over Twitter accounts sitting inside in the web config. Very simple to find. So you can then go and say, well, if I can read the web config, all right, what else could I do? Excuse me? Write it? That's, uh, I, I like your thinking. I honestly thought I could probably just go look at the entire structure of the website. Because if I can find the web config, I just go up one level, probably, and I find things like here. Now, if you were here and you found the website like this, what would you do? Look at the private directory. Everyone wants to look at the private directory. I like your thinking, but no. <laughs>
you'd go looking for things like, like the admin or the other things. And if you wanted to harvest passwords, a very simple thing, upload your own version of the admin code. So it would just tail out. So funny story. Facebook had a, a bug bounty. So they go looking, they ask you to go try and hack Facebook and to get different bugs and out. So what happened was a guy went and he did a quick DNS scan. And he checked all the different uh, subdomains that Facebook had. And he found files.facebook.com which was allowing people where they could upload files uh, internally from the uh, Facebook networks to do stuff. So he looked at it and he saw it was a file control system that had a version, say, 4.2. He checked and found that that particular version had a vulnerability. So he used the vulnerability against it and logged in. He did a quick run around, found a shell, and then he discovered that someone was in there for the past six months, had uploaded their own version of the login page, with just tailed all the usernames and passwords to a uh, text file, which then streamed out every 24 hours to a random endpoint. For six months, all em Facebook employees' credentials were being leaked out behind the scenes. So you could do this. You could just literally upload your own version of the code and then say, look, I'll just tail all the usernames and passwords. I don't have to crack anything. All right? Now, if you're thinking, Niall, I'd love to know more about this. That's great. I'll show you something. It's called the Google Hacking Database, GHDB. Okay? Here is, contains a list of Google dorks that you can use to find different things on the internet. For example, footholds all the way to, for example, files containing passwords. And I love the description of this. Passwords. For the love of God, Google found passwords. Ever Google things like passwords.xlsx, right? You will find a ton. By the way, don't ever Google a credit card number because Google gets a bit funky for you. It really starts giving out that you're up to something no good because no one types a credit card number into Google and they're lo looking to help granny. You know, <laughs> If you go looking for credit card numbers, it gives you out. But you will find as soon as you try a lot of these Google dorks, all of a sudden Google's protection and, and captures kick in. So it becomes a bit awkward and slower. Now, if you're thinking, oh, well, do you know what, Niall? I don't really like command line in the browser, you know, typing in URLs. It's a bit too complex for me. Right. It gets a bit easier. You can use search diggity. It's a thing from Bishop Fox. It integrates Shodan. It integrates the Google hacking database. It integrates different malware databases to allow you to craft very complex queries against Google to go looking for particular files and folders that you can find things with. So if you have, like I do this with a lot of my customers, I say, show me what version of software you're using and let me see what I can find online that matches it and see can we break it. Or we can find if there's vulnerabilities. The exploit DB, for example, contains a list of uh, different things that you can find where applications have been uh, owned and try and find the version number so you can find the remote exploit if you have to do it. So I'm going to have a look at something else which is more interesting to find things, and it's called GitHub. Everyone heard of it? Here they're very big. Now, GitHub is a fantastic resource for developers. It's where code goes to live. Right? How many of you have ever uploaded a secret to GitHub by accident? One or two. Eh, well done, you. Like the rest of us. Now, GitHub allows you to store documents, but if you go searching in GitHub repos for things like smtp.gmail.com, right, you will find usernames and passwords in configuration files, hard-coded in different repos that you can use to download and do stuff. And you can find usernames and passwords there. I found this particular one, which I really enjoyed, because it's a Spring Security Login and Registration, and it gives me a username and password in for C Turtle 40.405 uh, percentage. Okay? Now, if I was to do something like password equals, I get 5.4 million results. If I do, for example, file name config passwords, I get 248,000 result, 248, results. And if I do file name web.config passwords, I'm down to 134,000 results where I can start playing with things and getting to dig out passwords. I found this particular one here where it literally had all the different in dynamic DNS with the uh, username and password in the web config that you could uh, just stream out. Amazon have a hook into every single Git, uh, GitHub commit to check if you're uploading Amazon keys, which they will then disable. I think Microsoft have something similar, maybe, I don't know. But the, this thing is that people do Git commits, and all of a sudden you get kind of, you want to go find things, you use Git rob. 
GitRob is a tool for doing reconnaissance on your own repos to see if people are uploading secret or valuable information that you can use to, uh, that could be used against you. It's a very cool tool. It makes it very easy to, uh, to just pull it out and off you go. And it gives you uh, different types of intelligence against uh, your organization. And it can allow you to you know, slap your developers for being silly. Now, here are some resources that I showed up today. We have Shodan, we have Google, we have Google Hacking Database, or diggity, get Rob. Yep. Now, yes, I really want to put up a QR code here for sometimes just to see what people would do. Do you have any questions other than why the hell did you show us the crematorium? Yes, sir. Very good question. Is there anything you can run on your home network to see if your camera is not giving out free credentials? What you can do, uh, there's a couple of problems. With, there's a, there was a thing called, um, was it Black Eyes? That was a remote access Trojan that would uh, remote access uh, web cameras and it would allow people to take over them. Scan your machines, watch for dodgy, like run Wireshark or run like something internally. Um, if you have, there's a thing called NIDS, Network Intrusion Detection System. You can run Arch Linux with a, um, on a Raspberry Pi and connect it to your network, and it will watch for dodgy stuff going over the wire. And that will then start bringing you back and logging you out and saying what it can do. It's a very, it, look for building your own NIDS, network intrusion detection system, or have, there's a couple of things like canaries and things like that will do it for you. But if you want to scan your network to know what, or scan your external IP, just type the external IP into Shodan. It'll show you what it can see from there. Maybe there's a, uh, for example, a web server running that you didn't know was externally accessible, FTP port, whatever. If you have a NAS, Seagate, iOmega, uh, Western Digital, Lacey, all these different ones, right? They sometimes enable uh, UPnP and FTP externally and have defaulted credentials. A lot of people have NASs exposed on the web, and they put a lot of personal data out there, and you can extreme a lot. Uh, Asus routers and Netgear routers had a vulnerability where they would automatically enable FTP, and Asus was very specific to that, and their AI cloud, so just make sure you haven't got any of those. Update the firmware on your router, make sure it's up to date, um, and just kind of play cautious. Any other questions? Do I think ISP should do more to help the average user? Yes and no. Um, there's a, this is a hard choice about this because the simple reason is ISPs are literally providing you the service and up to you. It's like whether you should get car owners to kind of ensure you drive safely. Or sorry, car manufacturers to, or car dealers, sorry, to ensure you drive safely. What I think should happen is that there should be a simpler mechanism if we find things online that shouldn't be there, that we can report them to the ISP quicker and they can escalate it internally. Because a lot of the time that just goes into a help channel somewhere and they don't know what they're looking at. Um, it's a very tricky kind of, I, do I want my ISP to be kind of overlooking everything I'm doing? Definitely not me, but um, <laughs> you know, maybe. Good question though. Yes. Oh, yes, oh. Have I, commit, have I committed a crime by showing you all of this? No, no. I'll show you why. I use Shodan. So Shodan is a search engine. What it does, it crawls and then brings back all the screenshots. And then I'm just reading the screenshots. So I'm never connecting to them. So I'm isolating myself like a good, good criminal. Um, I'm isolating myself. I have a cutout man um, out there. The reason is um, if I was to connect to these illegitimately or whatever, yes, I probably would be committing a crime by connecting to them if I connected to myself, but I'm not. So what Shodan does is it uses like standard uh, connections, it opens the port, it uses like the VNC screenshot uh, command, sends a screenshot, saves it back in hex into the database and then shows you this afterwards. So I never actually connect to a uh, live system ever. Yes, Pete. Do, do you have to technically get the Do I have to get the permission? I have never actually got the permissions to show their pictures. I just, because I found them already. I, it's a very, yeah, it's a very good question. Should I have gone off and got like 150 people where they've kind of got done something stupid that probably wouldn't answer me and thought I was crazy uh, to say, can I show you why you're an idiot? <laughs> I really would have a really short talk. <laughs> so I could, I'd like to show you stuff, but no one said yes. <laughs> so it's all, imagine you can see <laughs> a sawmill. Um, it's a very good question. Do, yeah, I probably should. 
but I'd probably have to can the talk. It's all there for free anyway. It's on the internet, which means it's good. OK. Um, any more questions? Yes, sir. They generally, do I have a lot of luck when I'm reporting open cameras and open stuff with ISPs? Yes and no. Um, I would, depending on the ISP. Germany is actually quite good. Ireland, not so good. Uh, other ones, they, it depends on the size of the ISP. It depends on what you found and how you report it. I I, my favorite one is Nando's. So Nando's had one of their HVAC systems online, all right? where I found it, and it was a control panel for one of their London restaurants, and it, sh it had the Lando's logo, et cetera. And then I sent a tweet, tweet, uh, tweet, tweet, tweet uh, to Nando's and said, by the way, I think I found something that shouldn't be on the internet, belong to you. And they went, that's awesome. Um, we don't know what to do with that. We'll send it to our engineering department, and they'll freak out. So the engineering department replies back, thanks very much. You found that. We shouldn't have done that. Bad, bad. And then the Nando's guy replied back, dude, thanks for helping us out. We'd like to send you some chicken. <laughs> And then I said, I'm in Norway, and they went, oh, will you be in London soon? And I was like, no. <laughs> so my brother got two, freaking, two uh, free chicken dinners out of me uh, finding weird Nando stuff on the internet. Um, you get varied results depending on, the, on what you find. If it's very critical infrastructure, you definitely think. We notify certs a lot, um, especially with the MongoDB and other things we've done that. So, Any more questions? Yes, sir. Yes, manufacturers and, and people are definitely starting to make it more seriously. After the uh, different breaches we had with Mongo, DB, and um, other kind of things like that, they, they started kind of, maybe we should kind of change that opt-in to being opt-out. Um, Troy is back in the room there, and he's probably got the same kind of thing, pressure on thing uh, from, from this type of stuff. Social pressure generally forces people to change. Like, um, I can guarantee you, after, probably after the Ashley Madison hack, a lot of people had kind of invested in password managers and other sort of OPSEC and other different things, or they probably stayed the same and couldn't care less. I know my mom, I said to her, you can't do this, and then she offered to send me her credit card number by email. And I, you know, there's only so much you can do. A lot of people just have this whole idea that it's not that valuable to anyone else. Why would they want to steal it? As an Irish person, I'm always going, well, if it's there and it's free, I'll probably take it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> See, funny thing. So there you are. In, you know in the US, you've got the little um, the papers you can buy. You put your 25 cents in, they open it, and you take the one paper. right? So when I was there for the first time, I asked, seriously, why wouldn't someone take all the papers? And the yank beside me went, well, why would you need more than one? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's just my mentality for this. So yes, uh, our growing pressure, I think... The, the security is now becoming a stronger, stronger thing that we need to integrate because we realize that stuff is being stolen and sold and people are seeing the consequences before. You might see stuff being stolen and might not be released for four or five years. Now it's out in the wild in a couple of minutes. So, yeah. Any more questions? Going once, going twice. Go get some coffee. Thank you very much.